uh, people who who he need who need to take decisions the question is why why i have to use this why i have to use power bi why i have to use azure like this the why question is very important and such kind of meetups helps to uh, uh, overcome that uh, why questions so as uh, uh, one of the speaker told uh, he is working in uh, tableau you know, now he is curious to know about power bi both are bi tools but he is curious to know why i have to use power bi that's that's the that's the curiosity and uh, that's why we are here to share uh, our knowledge between us okay fine so let me begin my talk yeah a very happy morning guys i am dinesh kumar as you see in the slide product manager at synfusion software in data platform team i'm very happy to present this session as online webinar to all of you so here we go let me begin with a question to be a good learner what is the most important skill required we all know that uh, learning is an essential skill right so learning is an uh, part and parcel of our uh, our career and without learning we cannot we, uh, nothing nothing will be good so learning is, will, will be a part and parcel of uh, parcel of everything but to be a good learner what is the most important skill required so i recommend you guys to ping in the chat uh, chat okay ask questions arun has told that uh, should be a good uh, listener dinesh, and dinesh questions. you can use the event i mean they can talk they don't have to ping okay yeah fine fine yeah go ahead and uh, talk uh, guys yeah that way it is actually more interactive yeah rather than typing it mm -hmm. okay suresh told that you have to be a good listener okay good listener fine we have to be a good reader so we must be a read but okay uh, good reader curious to uh, learn things okay curiosity the skill uh, the curiosity in our uh, mindset and all those things okay karup sami so i have one skill in my mind i'll tell it is uh, communication right you you can think to to get the input uh, actually learning is something that we we as a human we grasp from the external uh, world into our mind but communication is reverse uh delivering the information from ourselves to others how does it uh, actually relates with but think that if you are able to convey an information as clear as possible to others then it is the same reciprocal you will be also able to learn things as quick as possible to the core to the deep as possible at the same at the same level if you are able to convey information as clearly then you will be also able to uh, uh, understand the things very easily so that's why uh, in my my perspective i will tell that the most important skill for a good learner is communication so communication when it comes uh, it, it is evolving very quickly and uh, from from day before because uh, historically still uh, people are uh, investigating right uh, so how things were there uh, how uh, how uh, how uh, humans were evolved and how the knowledge uh, happen all, all that how current people are able to know at that point somebody would have carved some uh, drawings in uh, caves very old caves and uh, somebody would have uh, written in uh, uh, writings somebody would have uh what to say uh, some 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 other paintings there there are many way so they express their ideas they communicate their ideas in some format either as a text or a visual or something right so that's why right now we are able to uh, listen to uh, i mean understand the things so i just think that how effectively they have communicated those things so that 
centuries after centuries we are able to even understand those things right so transferring information to produce a greater understanding that is what communication is it could be of any ma- any medium like uh, no, no, sorry any manner like non verbal vocal written or visual in form of mediums as you see in slide text voice video and in person so overall we should understand that communication is an essential soft skill for a successful career okay so communication here what i mean is it is not about telling a fancy english for speaking fancy english uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, not i'm uh, talking about that telling you conveying the information clearly that's what my point is okay so when it comes to this part uh, communication uh, aligning with our today's goal while thinking about communicating via visuals let's come to that point alone okay communicating via visuals so visuals in the sense it is going to be either a dashboard or report with with a set of charts with a set of uh, widgets or a table uh, a tabular column like as you see in the diagram right and and, uh, and one of the another thing is uh, the tool that is being used to create those visuals right so uh what are the bi tools uh, comes to mind or you are using right now just uh, let me know so uh, one of the speaker told uh, he is using tableau like that uh, anybody else are using any uh, any other tool or uh, who are no any visualization tool apart from power bi uh actually we are not using exclusively any bi tool but uh, i i am a windows developer i am uh, using charts and getting data from that just like that to okay so charts uh, you will be building with uh, libraries you will be building yes. Uh, yes. own charts yes. okay okay yes. yeah so anybody else any bi tool so we use altrix also altrix okay that's great okay anything else there are many bi tools kibana for visualization oh great so you will be familiar in elastic search ah yes you know? okay yes actually kibana is able to understand only elastic search am i right yeah it's part of the uh, yel uh, uh, yel kestia uh, stacks so only it can learn data from elastic search yeah yeah okay okay that's great any anybody else so we have uh, many tools guys uh, tableau r uh, sorry uh, tableau sisens uh, domo um looker click view there are many 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 tools are there okay so uh, and also apart from that uh, there are inbuilt packages in languages specifically for data science that is mainly r and python there are many inbuilt packages with which you, you can just uh, import the package uh, input your data it will provide you beautiful visualizations that is also a part of uh, uh, we should also take that as a set of tools so why i tell this part is uh, just a minute yeah uh, this is how using such kind of tools only the top cream layer gets the view of the business story as a story right so simply say a dashboard is a collection of metrics and kpis now let's come to the title what is your thought about data storytelling Uh, or uh, to to mean it in a simple way why the word story plays a main role here why why the term why the word uh, has emerged like this why it is story instead of a pre- data presentation data narration anything would be right why the word story uh, data storytelling such a kind of word what is your uh, guess guys
Okay, man is a good hearer of stories. Okay, that's correct. From Stone Age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very old way of uh, communication model. Prasad has told. And what else, guys? People will get interested naturally. That's great, Vidya. Yeah. Great. So, as uh, Prasad and Divya told, it is our human brain can understand very easily. If it is a, if it is like a story, our human brain can understand easily. In most of the public talks, usually stories make up the actual 50% of the content script. If you say, uh, uh, example, TEDx talks, uh, like that, very great uh, talks and all. You could clearly notice that story will be taking a, a, a portion, a, a great portion of the time. 20 minutes in TEDx uh, stage is a great, uh, uh, great arena. But in, in that 10 minutes, they will take just to tell a story because when something is told as a story. Uh, with uh, with the uh, person, with the person as so and so person, so and so characteristics, so and so uh, location, so and so background, everything, our mind automatically will generate the visual in our mind, right? So, the, so that we'll be able to easily understand and also remember as well. Okay, even politicians will be using uh, uh, such kind of uh, technique. Uh, maybe you remember or not, I just get uh, into my mind uh, suddenly. Jailalitha, Madam Jailalitha would have told uh, uh, a story in the uh, party hall itself. Uh, Story is another way to de de to to pleasantly uh, pinpoint someone or pleasantly pinpoint some situation. That's why politicians do use story so that it will be very interesting and attractive and also people would remember as well till they go to the ballot box and vote. And okay, just a minute. Yeah. How? Now let us see how stories will allow one to transform meaningful information uh, to a meaningful story. Okay. So as a dashboard, its purpose is to convert the data as information. As a story, storytelling dashboard, it will convert that information as a story. Right. Let's uh, give, uh, get into this point with more examples. I'll cover it later. So that's what importance of a dashboard. We'll be able to discover the patterns, how how things has happened, how things are currently going on and spot the trends. For example, if you take this COVID-19 uh, situation itself, you would have came across many, many dashboards are uh, uh, across uh, while, while you are uh, browsing and uh, in the news channels and all those things. What what you're actually getting? You're actually getting the pattern, how the trend, how the uh, spread ratio is being increased day after day. Currently, what is the uh, and, the, and that is uh, discovering the patterns. Second point metrics. What is the current confirmed cases? What is the current active cases? Actually, that is the actual real metric, not confirmed cases, because we are not going to do anything with it as a people. As a common public, we need to know what is the active cases in my actual area, right? So that you will be acting accordingly. And also spot trends as well. Uh, okay, taking as an example of uh, the government itself. Uh, so let's say if you some policy some sir. Based on the historical pattern, how how much people are getting affected with this and how much people are getting cured and with the number of days and all those metrics, he'll be able to decide the future. OK, how much fund still it requires, uh, how much IAS officers have to be allocated every district wise. So all these things he, he need to spot the trend. And take the right decisions, right? So it is dashboard is nothing but transferring data into information or metrics. OK, I hope now you will be able to clear with that point. So when it comes to storytelling, it is something that transforming information into more understandable insights so that anybody could understand, right? So dashboard will be prepared by, by some uh, BI engineer or some data guy, but that dashboard, uh, sorry, uh, but that dashboard, if it is 
clearly uh, mm-hmm. visualized in in an effective manner then it will be more understandable for for, for any person uh, maybe edapadi valani sami is a data not a data guy but he is able to understand the insights right only then he is able to get the right decisions and also if you are uh, submitting a report even uh, a, the report would be having uh, a great set of insights but if you be you will be submitting your report with thousands of rows in an excel file to your boss it will not be a con- convincing factor but if it is conveyed as a bar chart or pie chart instead of explaining numbers it will create a, a great value right and it actually you will see the story that lives in the data that's in the nutshell fine so as we discussed earlier there are many bi tools like uh, tableau power bi uh, click view look or anything but all the tools will be covering up three basic thumb rules okay so this is how this is how uh, any ba tool even the new ba tool which which would come in future also it will be laid in this foundation only okay so what i'm going to cover in this talk is that portion of uh, basic thumb rules so that it will be my talk will be more familiar with uh, and uh, it will be more attached with any ba tool uh, to common users as well so coming to the first point connect and extract data from different apps and sources there are many apps many apps and many data sources are there so that bi tool should be able to connect with different apps with ease with it should be super easy and also the security standards should be maintained for example if we are connecting uh, facebook then uh, the facebook mode of authentication should be enabled in that bi tool let's say it is as uh, oauth1 okay the you will be asked with your credentials and you will be asked with the permissions also before connecting to the bi tool uh, you will be getting a pop up so facebook is uh, so, uh, sorry uh, power bi is willing to extract uh, your facebook data and create some insight is it okay like that it will be asking if you note uh, note down in the uh, in uh, while connecting facebook in any bi tool it will be asking some information so it is nothing but following the security standards okay only then they can sustain in the market that bi tool the second point is it should allow analyzing those data and create effective visuals so analyzing here is uh, a yeah, a yeah, second level of uh, data cleaning we can say in general a bi tool will not edit the data edit the original data okay it will just create additional columns or uh, it will just uh, uh, yes it is it is like a bi tool will not edit the original data that is the actual thumb rule but for for the visualization purpose it will just create new columns it will allow you to create new columns over the old columns okay uh, such kind of features should be there in a bi tool because uh, let's say we are connecting uh, we are taking uh, metrics of uh, facebook from uh, uh, throughout the world or uh, just imagine that you are uh, gathering the uh, custom uh, l- system log information from america australia and india okay while the system log information is getting uh, registered in a file the date format will be differing right in us a different format will be there in india a different format will be there and in uh, australia a different format will be there the date format month date year so while it is being connected to bi tool that bi tool should be able to understand all those different formats or we have to create a new additional column so uh, telling the ba tool that see, take the actual date value from this column and convert it to so and so format so that my dashboard will be able to recognize all the all the rows uh, date columns okay such that you, you you should be able to analyze the data and convert it as visuals visuals is nothing but those tabular form of data you convert it as bar chart uh line chart or pie chart whatever it may be as visuals okay to to showcase the trends and uh, uh, comparisons finally once the visuals are created you should be able to communicate and share the insights again security comes into the picture okay so you have created a dashboard that dashboard for example uh, uh, just imagine i am working in a government agency and uh, the chief minister is asking me to prepare a dashboard to analyze the uh, uh, pandemic pandemic situation how 
the covid 19 cases has been uh, throughout tamil nadu uh, what, what kind of the, uh, like he is telling his requirements okay so i am preparing the dashboard once i have prepared the dashboard it should be easy to accessible for uh, the chief minister because he might need in a mobile uh, he might be in a projector watching some screen he might be in his laptop anything or he might be looking out in a paper so the way he would see might uh, uh, might be of any form so the dashboard which i created with the ba tool should be able to be uh, uh, deliverable in all such mediums okay so that dashboard should be uh, as you say uh, as we say it, it should be responsible to be displayable in a mobile tab or uh, laptop or large screen and that dashboard should also be, be allowed allowing me to export as uh, different file formats like a pdf or a image or a excel whatever it may be so that if chief minister asks me as a uh, print out simply i export as image and uh, just uh, print out and give or if he ask me to put in a projector uh, simply i can uh, project the dashboard to him or the chief minister is telling that see this is a very co very confidential dashboard you should this dashboard should be visible only to me not not anybody else then the even if the dashboard is shared as a link a hyperlink that that link should be working only to the chief minister alone so all these factors comes into a ba tool that's where the difference between data visualization tool and ba tool uh, comes into picture if if it is a data visualization tool then uh, simply converting the data as visuals that's it the thing is over but when it comes to a bi tool apart from this creating a visual do all the security factors also will be uh, will will play an important role that's why microsoft is having two different tools excel and power bi in excel itself you will be able to create different uh, beautiful visuals many of you would know but uh, why should uh, they create a power bi so the power bi evolved evolved as a business intelligence tool from data visualization tool and that ba power bi bi tool uh, provides all these collaboration uh, uh, features that is communicating sharing uh, with with security standard okay so if you guys want me to stop anywhere uh, just let me know right and okay mm, yeah coming back so on the process of getting insights from a, from a, from data actually we get merged into an ocean of data while analyzing it right there are a numerous source of data if uh, if uh, taking as a role uh, as an example for example if you are a team lead uh, then uh, the, the, already the team lead will be having a set of goals right he should be monitoring his team uh he should monitor his team's progress and he should monitor the deliverables are proper or not the roles vary from company to company just i am telling an example and uh, he should uh, he should provide the feedbacks uh, month month on month feedbacks to their engineers and he should uh, submit a six month uh, employee performance report to the management everything right it is not just technical part alone so at this stage he will be bombarded with many data if he decides okay uh, let us create a let, let us uh, get a proper insight from uh, all uh, let us use all these data source and proper insight so just see how many data source he has to use he has to use the uh, task management software like jira and uh, he has to use some other uh, tool where uh, the work log uh, work logs are being uh, logged and he has to use the tool where the project progress is being mapped engineer wise so he had to use many tools many data sets exist and finally there, there is a chance of uh, 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 get, getting the proper insight right there is a chance of not getting the proper insight so why it, i have told the previous point is one should be capable of becoming an ad hoc reporter you can even google this term ad hoc reporting it is a very simple uh, uh, analogy it is nothing but any kind of uh, report that you as a user put together yourself as and when you need it rather than a predefined template simply say if you want to uh, create a dashboard with some data you should be able to create 
right even you are an it guy or non it guy okay even you are a non it guy if you think that okay i need a dashboard or uh, or i need a visual to decide some uh, uh, insights you should be able to easily create such a dashboards okay so let me tell a situation uh, to explain this concept uh, you all know the current situation the hospital situation where uh, uh, most of the cases are being admitted only for uh, covid 19 cases only right all the other uh, departments are uh, either non crowded or empty but only one uh, one uh, type of cases alone being bombarded into all the government hospitals nowadays in uh, private hospitals also started right so the main thing which the management need to track is bed occupancy there is a kpi called as bed, bed occupancy rate in healthcare which is nothing but tracking about the free beds and availed beds right so this is one particular question if that uh, the the respective uh, it team is been uh, uh, provided a task that to create a, a simple visual so that it should be able to easily track the bed occupancy day after day it should be real time whenever a person discharges that should get updated so that it should be real time so that Uh, as management they'll be able to easily uh, manage the other resources as well like icu rooms ventilators uh, and uh, what else uh, the cleaners doctors nurses there are many things right it is not that bit in news channels all and all uh, we get the information that uh, okay we, we have arranged so and so number of beds so and so number of beds it is not only that factor the healthcare professions are uh, very very keen and they are very involved in uh, analyzing the other resources as well right okay coming back so if i, I, I the, you you would be asking a question so i am not a data guy then how can i get started to be a storyteller or ad hoc report creator right you would be getting this question so what i'm going to tell next is uh few few things which are there for for a while but we haven't used it okay that's what i'm going to tell few things which can be used for uh, reporting purpose which are those apps in our day to day life but we haven't used so far so i'm going to point some of those now so i hope most of you would be using powerpoint even now i am using powerpoint in that while you are creating a new slide there will be icon um like this there will be icon like this it will be telling that uh, it is nothing but you can able to create this so much so much of charts just with uh, within just you be in the powerpoint itself okay so this is nothing but the same base library which has been used in excel and power bi but they they have uh, extracted that and uh, they they have made it user friendly to create visuals within the powerpoint itself right so as we spoke earlier uh, if you are going to uh, uh, if you are provided with a task to analyze uh, some set of engineers past 3 months rating then you might uh, take their rating information and uh, uh, just uh, thinking over the idea uh, everything is fine but what in case if you finally you prepare a report like this and provide it to management so you could easily tell that so uh, the person engineer 1 is being uh, uh, good at uh, uh, at the first month and then later on uh, he he lagged down and then again he started to piled up so you can create a story from this visual itself instead of just with a statement if you present your information with with such an visual then it is uh, an easy to uh, manner you, you make your stakeholder or you make your manager to understand things very easily right he'll be able to quickly understand okay this is what okay so and so so what i'm going to do now is uh, uh, maybe you know how to do do this but still uh, let me quickly create one such uh, visual so that you will uh, i hope it will induce you to try on your own as well so what i'm going to do is a new slide and here i am creating an insert chart visual 
So here from a set of char. So for the simplicity purpose, I, I am choosing the column chart itself. So just a minute, uh, one more person has joined. Okay. Yeah, welcome Baskaran. Uh, please mute yourself. Okay. So coming back to the presentation, uh, I have just clicked this uh, visual, uh, the column chart visual, and in that, just by clicking the chart itself, I get a small Excel kind of uh, uh, a pop up here, right? So. Just I'm going to do, uh, it is fine to edit the per, uh, portions alone. So here it is going to be engineer one, engineer two, and so on. And here, let me take, uh, take it as uh, April. Okay, I think it should be oh, fine. Whatever it may be, it will be easy to understand for us. May, June. So like that, I have framed it. And immediately the values also get uh, updated here. You could see engineer and the rate, uh, the uh, ratings of different months and all those things. And if you see the icon here, plus icon, it will allow you to configure the properties. Access titles, you can set. So this is going to be the rating. So let me edit that. And what else? Data labels. We are able to see the value here. If it is not there, then we have to, our eye have to move uh, to and fro. So, so engineer two, the, the the column is here. So the value is nothing but four something. But if I enable the data label, it will be easy to understand, right? And data table, if I want to display a ta table as well, then simply I can click the data table. And error bars, it is something uh, advanced thing, so we don't need. And we can also enable the trend line. So trend line is nothing but uh, to see the trend in a like uh, in a simple line. So let me check the latest month, June month's trend line. So you could see the how the things have changed from. Okay, actually this is uh, this for this particular chart. This will not suit because we, we cannot compare between engineers. Uh, so let me remove this. But this is nothing but comparing the visuals, uh, comparing the value over different uh, categories okay Fine. and one more thing is uh, powerpoint design ideas this is also an effective way of uh, conveying information so th this is available here i think most of you are using but just for a namesake let me just tell so just by clicking this design ideas you will be getting uh, different options of uh, presentation so better uh, i can choose some another which uh, slide yeah you can take this. So as you could see, in a, in a fraction of second, once we click the design ideas, the, uh, the, uh, the application is able to understand the context, always audience in mind. And it is actually populating a icon with human. And uh, uh, in mind, then it is populating a, uh, a bulb-like icon and colors then automatically it has uh, produced a color palette. So not only it is understanding the uh, context and producing the images, it is also providing related icons, right? Apart from uh, uh, this much set of uh, design options, to the slide options, right? So you can use uh, these things during your, uh, even in simple presentation as well, while, while providing your uh, uh, monthly uh, work done report to your uh, management or stakeholder, even the, uh, if you present it in such a manner, they'll be pleased, right? Fine. And one more uh, thing is uh, Excel. So in Excel, how many of you have used uh, ideas? There is a feature called ideas. How many of you have uh, used or uh, how many of you already know about that? Anyone guys?
Oh, great. Gopal has used uh, ideas. That's great. So uh, let me also try to explain that uh, again. Yeah. Welcome, Jagadish. Um, let, let's get back to the, uh, to the context. Hi, thank you. So thank this, you. yeah. So this is a simple file. I hope you are able to see an Excel file. It is an Excel file uh, that is uh, reporting the number of cases in each county of uh, each state in United States uh, uh, country. Okay. It is throughout the world, but just for the uh, for your understanding, I am telling that in each uh, state in in US in each state in each county how much confirmed cases are there how much death how much recovered how much active cases are there and uh, what is the fatality ratio and all those information so this information is from uh, this data is from uh, john hopkins university which has been used throughout the world uh, to to get the stats between uh, different countries right even the decision makers from government also most of the government also they are uh, using this so this is a data and uh, with this data, I, I have information, right? But uh, uh, even I can use the Excel feature itself to uh, do some uh, things like I, I can sort or uh, I can uh, reverse the sort and all those things. That is fine. But if I need some insights, then it is uh, not enough for me, right? So let me just click the uh, ideas now once again. Okay. Let me click the ideas. So what it will do is it will take the data set to the cloud and understand the data set, understand the schema of the data set. So automatically populate in different widgets and it will show as a different set of options at the right uh, in a couple of uh, in, in within a minute itself. Let us wait for a few seconds. Yeah, so in a matter of seconds, I'm able to get different set of visuals while being in Excel itself, right? So if uh, if uh, someone like a CEO or a hospital dean, then uh, they don't need to wait for someone who who uh, to, to get the story out of uh, some data, right? So this Excel itself, this ideas itself, it is presenting a great set of visuals. For example, let's take um, some visuals. Okay. So it is telling that it is uh, just see the point. This particular this these set of visuals are not only populating the widgets as visuals. In addition, it is also telling the statement as well like a human recovered increases over time, right? We are not interpreting and finding that it is by default. It is uh, able to tell the things recovered increases over time. The country US has noticeably higher number of deaths. The country Japan and Russia have noticeably. OK, this is not irrelevant because longitude. It is actually taking it as a number and uh, just uh, uh, providing that we can ignore that. And uh, what to say? Yeah. It is uh, populating itself with a different scatter plot, pie chart, bar chart. So again, uh, we are able to see that US has noticeably in, uh, higher active cases and all those things. So we, in no time, we are able to get the visuals. Uh, we, we are able to get the insights from the uh, from the raw data. So even uh, just on a button click, I am able to insert this chart again in my uh, Excel itself, right? So this is where the data visualization, the power of data visualization. But beyond this, I will not be able to do other parts, other collaboration parts. For that, we need a BI tool, right? So both are different. But why I am telling the about the PowerPoint and Excel is anyone, even a non-IT guy can use this feature. And also even IT guy or data guy or as a team lead or manager, uh, in quick sort of time, we can uh, produce, produce insights and while presenting ourselves, uh, all right, communicating ourselves uh, to a high, higher management or, or, or to our team members, uh, visually communicating, uh, communicating visually will imp will provide a great impact. Okay, that is the main purpose. I am telling about the PowerPoint and Excel. 
Okay. So, coming back to the presentation, there are a few more things. Yes. Uh, yeah, just one question. Like, uh, yes, Divya. Is this feature available in all versions of Excel and PowerPoint, this design ideas? Uh, actually, the most recent version, like, uh, what to say? I'm able to use this uh, for the past two years, uh, like the current Office 365 version and the previous version. Maybe you will not, this will not be available in uh, very old versions like 2007 and all those things. But uh, very recently, it will be definitely available. Okay. There is no doubt in that. Uh, but one thing is present very far before the PowerPoint uh, creating charts, right? The creating columns, it is present from uh, 2007 itself. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So coming back in just a minute. Okay. So uh, before uh, proceeding to uh, uh, further about storytelling, exactly, uh, let me tell few more, uh, few more information, few more things to be known. Okay. So first of all, if you are looking up into a data, then we should be uh, able to understand two things, right? For example, we are looking into this data, then uh, immediately we should be able to understand two things. One is dimension and one is metrics, okay? So dimension is nothing but whichever whichever uh, column, uh, you, you, you cannot be able to aggregate it, okay? Metrics is nothing but Whichever column you will be able to aggregate it. Aggregate is nothing but performing some minimum, maximum, uh, variance, all those mathematical functions. Okay. So simply say the example is uh, for dimension example is uh, latitude, longitude, city name, state name, country name. These are all could be uh, again uh, even latitude, longitude is again numbers, but uh, you you cannot summarize it. You cannot sum uh, add two latitude values. Uh, to get something. There is no meaning. Okay. So whereas if you take the population data or the confirmed cases, the active cases, all these information you can uh, add. For example, you can add the total number of uh, active cases in uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, uh, Karnataka. Right. But you cannot add simply the name Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Fine. So to tell with the example here, uh, uh, this is a, a metric, right? This is a metric or a, simply say measure. Measure will be easy to understand. So that's what all the BA tools will be using the term. So this is a measure. These four things are measure. But latitude, longitude is uh, dimension. Okay. Uh, fine. So is province state is a measure or dimension? It's a dimension. Okay, that's great. And uh, case fatality ratio is a measure or dimension? Measure. Okay, that's great. Fine. In fact, in case fatality ratio also, uh, there is no meaning if it is added. But if we do the average, then it gives meaning. You understand? Uh, case fatality ratio of Tamil Nadu is 1%. Uh, fatality ratio of Karnataka is 1.2%. Uh, then average performing average, it is nothing but 1.1 percent. Again, here summer, uh, summing up uh, both these values doesn't provide any value, right? So you have to be, you have to understand uh, these basic things uh, before you convert uh, any data to visual. Uh, once again, data is not something that it is. It sits in Excel and all those things. Whichever work we do, simply. We calculate, evaluate the story points uh, before a sprint starts, uh, and uh, we evaluate engineers' uh, performance, or work done feedback at the end of month. Everything is data. But if your thought process changes like this, as a me uh, measure, dimension, and uh, how it should be, which should be, uh, which should be summarized, which should be calculated as average, and all those things, then uh, your your total uh, mindset will change, and uh, your thought process will change drastically. Fine. Right? So you, you will be able to find a lot of tips uh, just if you uh, just Google 
three things for uh, uh, effective visualization three tips for uh, creating a great dashboard like that you will be finding a lot of tips uh, in online but i i just framed in uh, in my context so effectively communicating some extracted insight to the target audience is very important okay so uh, in my point these are the three skills to improve the storytelling with data the first and foremost is foremost is, is being specific about who is your audience okay uh, so as we saw the previous example if i am a ba engineer i am going to create a covid-19 dashboard for the chief minister of tamil nadu then it is not that i am creating a dashboard for myself okay so uh, once i create a dashboard i should not be in in a mindset like okay i have created a dashboard it is having so and so widget it is looking beautifully and i am able to understand all the widgets that is not the mind mindset it should be understandable to the uh, the respective target audience that is the chief minister he might be a tech or tech, uh, non tech guy right uh, but he should be able to understand the visuals that i i create in my dashboard right so we should keep uh, the target audience in mind so, so in such a way that we have to create the visuals thinking is nothing but uh, knowing who are they what do they care what do they expect what what keeps them not sleeping at night so actually uh, as a leaders of uh, states they they'll be much worrying that okay how things are going to happen how long this pandemic will be there and uh, how can i uh, take other actions like uh, funding to other projects which i have approved already so these are all things they they keep on uh, will be worrying as a chief minister or a district collector also uh, so if we present a dashboard understanding their pain points and uh, uh, showing the visuals as easy as possible to understand to be understandable by them then uh, he'll be very happy and take proper decisions right so that is what the first point is always keep your audience in mind and second clever in colors so coming to colors it is not only about using pleasing colors there are many other factors also uh, thinking that uh, where your audience need to look at the first look uh where your audience should look in in a dashboard in which portion they, they either they should look at the center or they should look at the left top where they should look at that prominent place we have to use a contrast color and we have to make that audience to look okay that's that's one one main point and another uh, main point is if you are creating a public dashboard that is been uh, uh, that is been you are going to submit it for public and could be uh, viewed by any kind of people then you have to remember the color blindness concept also simply you cannot uh, uh, use colors whichever you are liking okay so uh, remembering the color blindness concept you have to use so and so colors there are there are some uh, uh, generic tutorials are there but these are advanced things but still i am uh, i'm telling for effective visualization and next we should use more words in a dashboard uh, i mean it is words not sentences right so it is like access labels value labels titles all this information as we saw earlier in the ppt itself uh, i was uh, enabling uh, data label right so uh, after each column uh, on top of each column the the value was there uh, 2.5 4.8 the rating was there right so if the, if such a information is there the user need not interpret the the uh, y axis and x axis okay the column is uh, this much height is there so what should be the value he need not interpret simply by looking he'll be able to get the value right so based on the context and situation how how effectively or uh, how much possible uh, you can use those words okay so that will really give uh, the users uh, a quick representation of your numbers and charts that uh, that you have in your, in your dashboard and okay so now let me open uh, my power bi and uh, let me just explain you what 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 is the basic concept uh, i mean uh, how how actually a dashboard is being created right so uh, na, na, let me tell about power bi in two perspective those who have already familiar with bi tools and those who doesn't uh, use the bi tool at all in both the context uh, let me just uh, present my uh, information so coming to power bi it is a bi tool but 
the layout, basic layout will be designed in such a manner that uh, all the Windows users will be easy to get merged. Uh, for example, either you take Excel or Word or PowerPoint, whatever it may be, there will be tabs, right? In each and every tabs, we'll be finding a set of features uh, related to that tab, right? Similarly, Power BI also is designed in such a manner. Home, insert, modeling, view, and so on, so okay. So that is the first thing. Uh, when I, when uh, when a user who is been using Windows, while he is logging to Power BI, he doesn't feel very awkward. Okay, something is there. We can get started like that. His mind will be there. Up, uh, not uh, by even uh, not by checking uh, help documentation itself. And then uh, what they'll have is uh, just click on file. You will be seeing a set of options. And first thing which you will uh, uh, have in your mind is connect your data. I told right, there are the three main things which all the BA tools will be covering up. Connect your data, analyzing your data, uh, analyze and visualize. And the third point is uh, share and collaborate, right? So, so first thing is obviously data. Because uh, if you, you, are a, you are one person uh, going to uh, use a dashboard means, obviously you are having some data, right? So obviously the first step is nothing but connecting your data. Let me connect that same data, uh, which uh, I just showed you in an in the Excel file, the COVID-19 uh, data. So this is the latest stats that is available globally. So I have chosen the same Excel file itself. So it will import the data and uh, um, do some basic uh, transformations so that this particular data using this data you can create visuals in power bi okay so it is showing as uh, the same uh, uh, tree tree kind of structure uh, if you are using uh, sql server management studio then it will be like this only right so you'll be populated uh, the the databases will be at the top and uh, if you just open it up the tables will be displayed since in Excel, I am having only one file. It is showing this uh, option and I'm just selecting it. So I'm able to get a quick preview of data. And from here, uh, I have two options. Either I can load the data as it is and proceed to get insight or I can transform the data. So let's see what happens if I trans uh, if I click transform the data. So what it will do is why the progress bar is it will actually analyze what are all the basic transformations that Power BI itself can do. That uh, like that, it will uh, start to analyze. Uh, if any basic uh, transformations uh, are to be done, then it will do by itself. Just a minute, someone has joined. Okay, fine, no one. Um, yeah. So here again, uh, I, I get another pop-up. Actually, this is the Power BI main window. Uh, I get another uh, pop-up window on top of this. Okay, so here uh, I can uh, choose whatever uh, things uh, like what to say, what we can do. Mm, let me just uh, select transform or uh, add column. Uh, th th like th there are many operations are there. Even you could see they have uh, started to integrate uh, Azure Cognitive Service in Power BI itself. So if you simply if you just select a column and select text analytics, then it will automatically detect the sentiment, um, what else it does, the keywords uh, analysis and all those things, the uh, rating, uh, what else, classification, many things, you can do everything. So, or if you have a custom machine learning uh, model, you have you, uh, you have it, then you can incorporate that, that also in, in a simple button click, right? That's the power of uh, Microsoft, they, once they do, so and so things uh, and uh, immediately they will collaborate with all the related tools. So what can we do now? Uh, so there are different options. Uh, you, you can transform the data or you can add new column um, like that, right? Uh, just a minute. I, I'm just checking out uh, if the date format is correct. I'm just thinking uh, what can be done. Okay, so yeah, I have selected the date column and what, I, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select uh, date only. Okay, immediately uh, once I did this, you could see, 
where is that extracted date? Yeah, you could see that the date only is present because uh, I am sure that the, there is no use of uh, having time in my uh, data since it is going to be day wise data. OK, so it is uh, I just converted it as the format with date only. Fine. And what else we can do? Even I can reduce the decimal numbers here and uh, I can play with. Uh, yeah, I can even split split this up and uh, have a, a separate separate columns. So here you could see uh, I, after selecting this column, uh, it is asking me that uh, by delimiter. So if I just give that, it will start analyze and uh, automatically tell the comment as well. Sorry, the symbol as well and. Uh, it will automatically split up the columns. OK, so uh, you could imagine I, t I have told already that the original data will will not be will, uh, will not be affected by Power Bay. Then how it is happening? So everything is happening with in memory database of Power BI. It is not actually touching up the original data at all. My Excel file is as it is. It will not be changed at all, but I am able to play tra do transformation and uh, do everything uh, in Power BI because I'm uh, all these alterations, all these uh, RDBMS table alterations I'm doing within Power BI. Power BI will be having a copy of uh, this data set within itself. That is why I'm, uh, I'm able to do all this transformation. I'm, I'm changing the schema as well, right? You are able to see this, right? Fine. Uh, I think this is enough for uh, transformation. Uh, let's so let me just uh, give the close and apply. Even uh, here again, you could see that uh, what we'll be doing once we type something in Word document, we'll be going to file and uh, do save, right? So here also it is going to be close and apply. So so far we have been in a in a UI which you can imagine like a, um, data connector designer. We connected the data and then. We are designing the data, data designer. We can imagine like that, and this is going to be the uh, the the uh, UI for creating visuals. Now we have the data, right? We connected the data and we analyze the data. Next, the third step is we are going to visualize the data. So for that, what I'm going to do is uh, simply uh, select a visual, stacked bar chart. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, this did someone else. OK, fine. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. OK. Um, so simply selecting this widget. What I'm uh, what the next step is I, I need this uh, bar chart and simply I have to select the uh, uh, columns which is present at the right end. It will be populated under the uh, heading called fields. OK, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, get the select the dimension country dimension and I'm going to have the measures as active cases. OK. So I think it will be uh, a lot of. Lot of countries, so yeah, it is going on right as you could see there is a lot of countries, uh, but uh, I'm able to simply get the visual right. And one more important widget in every dashboard every person will be using is uh, using the number card. This is a very powerful uh, uh, widget, right? And uh, for this, let me just populate the information about uh, confirmed. Confirmed people, so it is telling that uh, 14 million people are confirmed so far. And. What else I could do here? It is by default. It is doing the sum operation. I told the right if it is a measure column, we can do all sort of aggregate operation. So this is going to be a, by default. It is it has selected some, but we can choose either it is average, minimum, maximum or so. For example, let me show the uh, uh, case fatality ratio. Again, let me choose another number card and here let me choose the case fatality ratio. Again, by default, it will be choosing the sum only, but what I should do is I have to change it as average. And 
it so it will uh, automatically change itself as 3.58 okay so case fatality ratio it should be average confirmed it it can be some or average based on the insights what we need and what else we can do okay show value as percent of grand total so okay this is not necessary thing because we already performed an average over the data itself so this is not necessary and what else we can do we have countries right so we can even have a map widget let me show and after map widget uh, oh my god okay in the map widget simply let me select the countries and the deaths happen the death count so it is populating the data based on the value it is actually populated getting populated as you can see this is a bing map as uh, microsoft uh, microsoft bing maps we can able to see it in power bi itself and okay let me just change this to this map and that will be more easy to understand yeah now uh, i think it will be easy to understand so by default it is showing as uh, bubbles right uh, we can change the visual factors as well so you could see the uh, icon like uh, a brush like brush kind of icon right so it is allowing us to uh do the formatting options by ourselves so here by default it is bubble if i change uh, the option as heat map to be on then the things will change as uh, heat map as you could see the heat map uh, kind of bubble is getting populated automatically or uh, there are different map styles are there uh, based on the uh, theme i select it will get changed automatically so dark theme or light theme whatever it may be okay so uh, what we have to do is based on the context based on the dashboard or based on the report we we have in our mind we have to choose each and every aspect of these things fine okay so with that uh, I, i may not be able to cover all the concepts yes uh, jagadish can you please tell Uh, with regard to the maps yes I just want to understand how granular can it go for example can we say uh, districts in tamil nadu for example okay okay you are asking about uh, drill down the level kind of yeah yeah granularity at which depth it can it go to can it just just staying at the country level or can we go granular to at the level of you know to certain extent which is more local is what i'm asking yeah yeah i understand actually uh bing maps to 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 the knowledge uh, what i have practiced is bing maps is uh, more effective with uh, united states it 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 will it is it will be more granular as depth as possible okay in what context i am saying is if we just give the data as country name for example here uh, it can even recognize till the county level also in us country state and county in india it is uh, country state and city uh, in us it is uh, another level will be there so till as much as level possible uh, uh, united states will be uh, just by giving the name the bing maps will be able to understand very familiar okay still okay. yeah still uh, uh, it is not possible to cover up all the things right there are many many countries many states are there so what uh, the other option is now let me select the uh, latitude and longitude option let's see what happens okay i think uh, this particular data has some issues actually the other way is if you have simply the latitude and longitude then again uh, this map uh, will be able to populate that particular points it will simply uh, have a pointer kind of uh, that location symbol right 
it will have some uh, symbol on top of that and whatever measure we show uh, it will just populate there so okay. it doesn't consider uh, country and all so if we give proper latitude and longitude value then it will uh, populate that information okay that's helpful now, and again uh, this this uh, set of features uh, i'm telling right this varies between different different bi tools microsoft is based using bing bing maps uh, in tableau they might be using some other uh, open source maps also there are many many maps are there right based right. on the licensing many factors are there so uh, different different maps will behave differently but most probably all the maps will be able to understand united states uh, maybe india those who were they, oh, they are democratic those information will be uh, openly uh, understandable by that map but all the maps will be able to understand the latitude and longitude that's for sure okay thank you yeah okay uh so let me continue back to a uh, what are the things uh a storytelling dashboard should have fine so uh, a, a general dashboard as i told earlier it will uh, convert the data into insights sorry into information right uh, that is what a dashboard is but now what we are going to uh, see is what a storytelling dashboard should have okay because again if it is going to be a storytelling uh, uh, kind of scenario there is no other tool the same bi tool but how we are uh, converting our visuals into into a next next level of uh, thing fine so in that the first point is uh, a storytelling dashboard should be able to communicate the insight such that anyone should be able to understand the context okay anyone it is not that uh, the data guy or the dashboard creator not that, that that much alone it should be understandable to anybody that is the main point and next it should be something like uh, a next version of prepared dashboard okay so in general uh, to, to to as far as i have saw a storytelling dashboard will not be created at a stage first data will be there then a dashboard will be uh, cre created and again on top of that dashboard only uh, some kind of some kind of uh, cleanups will be made and uh, uh, to to address one major question alone that dashboard will be converted as storytelling dashboard okay i'll uh, tell this one with an example in the upcoming slide and the third one is it should be personalized to uh, to one or a set of target audience alone for whom the mentioned in insights are very useful okay uh, uh, with this point you should not be able to you should not be confusing the first one and second one this one is the dashboard the first point is the dashboard should be understandable for any uh, understandable for anybody who saw see that and the third point is the target audience it should be for one set of target audience okay it should not be like a, a dashboard for uh, everybody it is a dashboard specifically for ceo it should be a dashboard specifically for politicians like that okay so let me tell an example uh I, i i told with the first point right communicate the insights such that anyone can understand the context so if you see this dashboard uh this is a student performance analysis dashboard okay so the students list will be there uh, their grade will be there average mark gpa attendance so on so information so this will be the same dashboard for for the entire college just understand with that so entire college in the sense uh principal department head class tutor everybody will be able to access this but the thing is uh, the principal will be able to see all the departments okay uh, computer science department mechanical department uh, ee sorry uh, so on so all the departments and the department head will be able to see that particular department alone computer science department cannot be able to see the matrix of computer uh, uh, management department okay uh, so commerce department i'm sorry uh similarly commerce department cannot be able to see the matrix of another department so it is drilled down to that department and third one is uh it it should be specific to uh again if it is drilled down that dashboard should be specific to that class tutor alone for example be uh triple e third year for that tutor alone this dashboard should be visible the data i mean so the principal will be able to see all the departments department head only that department class tutor only that class so all these will be uh, enabled in a dashboard 
the security feature. But the, the, that is the first point. And the second point is the same set of visuals will be pleasing and will be understandable for all the all the visual, uh, uh, persons like principal or secretary. They, they are uh, in the management level of people and uh, department head. He is in between and class tutor. He, they, they are a bit low. They will be more interactive with students. But this the set of visuals chosen here will be understandable by all the all level of people. That is the main point that I am uh, coming to convey. Understandable by everyone. OK. And next thing is uh, the a storytelling dashboard should answer one specific question alone. OK, so as you could see here, the same John Hopkins University has provided such uh, uh, question based insights. So here you could see policies, cases, deaths in your state or has have states flattened the curve. This is the just one question. The dashboard will be uh, also covering up just one th th this question alone. Let me show with the actual chart itself. Where is the? Yeah, here it is. So have states flat on the curve. This is the question. So if you want to know that, I just clicked it and I get the presentation. So all the state codes, AK, uh, WA, Washington, Orlando, um, what else, uh, Wyoming. So all these states are displaying and there is a small line also. So it is uh, simply telling that the, the confirmed cases count whether it is flattened or not. As you could see, let us take an example of uh, AZ. I don't know which. Ah, okay, it is Arizona, but it is telling that things are okay for some moment, but from the June month, the things are drastically, the cases are drastically increasing, right? And coming back, if I choose something else, yeah, New York, it is very populated uh, uh, state. Uh, it is uh, telling the reverse. It was uh, getting the peak at the month of April and May and it has slowly started to decrease, right? So things are fine in New York. So it is answering that uh, only one question. Have states flatten the curve? This is what a CEO or a manager would be asking, right? Whether the per performance of the application has improved or not. That's it. That's it, his question. So what we have to do? We have to uh, uh, provide him in a mail that uh, we'll be usually providing him in a mail that see, so yeah, at the uh, so and so release, the performance of app, the initial app loading is uh, 10 seconds. Now it is the, uh, uh, 5 seconds. Uh, database creation, it is uh, 3 seconds. Now it is 1 second. Like it will be creating a, uh, usually in a table. That's what we'll be doing. But think that if you are able to present it in a uh, visual as well by using the tools, quick tools which I do, like PowerPoint or Excel, it will be insightful, right? For him. Okay, so and so. And uh, he'll be uh, pleasured as well. Okay, so. so uh, this much performance has been increased or even it is negative. Um, he'll be OK with the presentation at least. OK, so now it is negative. Now the performance is not increased yet. Uh, what else can be done like that? Uh, we can go with the next question instead of uh, a clumsy kind of situation, right? So um, coming back to the presentation. So one specific question, a storytelling dashboard will be addressing one specific question, OK? And one more important uh, scenario of a storytelling dashboard is each it will be uh, having a, such a kind of uh, uh, scenario. Uh, tension to resolution. Tension to resolution is nothing but the important KPI that is necessary for that particular dashboard will be present in a key area, in a ma main area and around that KPI all the other uh, widgets will be present. OK, let me tell you with an example. OK, just a minute. I think I brought back the link. So once again, the, the tension part doesn't matter to you, but to the audience. OK, if the hospital dean is looking at this dashboard, his tension part is 
beds number of beds available and the resources so uh, it it is his tension part that's why this widget is placed in this uh, in the center part okay so uh, just relating the same point which i mentioned in the previous slide uh, considering the target audience the tension relies over here and all the other related widgets present around this widget okay oh, fine you are able to understand the uh, the main point the tension to resolution whether you are placing the right widget at the right place that is very important okay okay i think i spoke this earlier positioning the kpis and and this also we discussed i think uh, the hospital resources so how uh, uh, how to be how it should be managed and uh, having such a kind of visually representing information it will be very uh, pleasing for uh, to 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 take the decision even i can show that with the example itself so this is the world map dashboard um where you could see the all the information by country and what is the confirmed cases and what is the daily cases and all those things let me show you some insight so in this let me directly choose the country us so i am able to see the a uh, matrix of united states and one uh, one thing which i doesn't like with this dashboard is confirmed case uh, confirmed is been uh, provided with the color of red color actually i don't think it is uh, uh, it is so much of danger kind of thing right because the fatality rate is uh, very less most of the people are getting recovered but then why uh, such a such a kind of color so that that thing uh, i have a feedback uh, on, on my personal view rather than using uh, such a kind of red color they can go with some other color like uh, uh, blue or some other kind of shade so if we coming back to the dashboard if we take the consider the united states you could see the confirmed cases count is uh, getting steeply increasing right so there is uh, the flattening of curve is not not it happen but when it Where let's just take the China, the hero, and here it is. They have already flattened the curve way before March itself, and still they are in the game. But nothing, uh, nothing much to be worried. So that's why they are able to uh, manage and things are going. On. This is what uh, the news channel and all those things uh, are saying: flattening the curve, flattening the curve. So. i am able to still i am able to see the flattening the curve uh, only in uh, china maybe i think uh, indonesia or malaysia will be able to yeah no even other countries the same scenario maybe let's see malaysia what happens you can check north korea <laughs> let me see i think north korea data is not present here mm. or russia yeah russia it will be there coming to malaysia also it is doing good let us see russia where is it actually this is also not a user friendly right it should be having some search bar and i should be able to easily select that but let's see russia was way before yeah here it is yeah, russia Okay, Russia also not uh, okay. It is not selected. Yeah, Russia also still in a state of uh, getting managed. So things are going like this. So if it is uh, such a dashboard for a person who takes worldwide decision, then uh, he can take uh, a a neat set of decision, right? A dashboard. So that's the point I tried to say, and. Uh, hotels yeah ah, okay coming to hospital resource this is what the image i i, I just saw so 
uh, th there are many many people uh, uh, analyze and uh, produce dashboards uh, subject to the uh, disclaimer they place the disclaimer by themselves but all such kind of uh, data helps the at least the local government people the state government the even the district level collectors it helps them right because just imagine a Coimbatore district collector or Chennai district collector uh, without such data how will be able to uh, decide some things uh, because hospital is not going to be enough at all then they have to book some uh, halls or colleges to accommodate additional bits right so this is how uh, this is this is how they will be tracking uh, all the resources and they will be deciding about funding for additional resources and one more thing which I'd like to tell is. Uh, yeah. So this is a, a, a complete dashboard which is provided by Power BI itself, uh, allowing developers to embed in their applications. OK. Uh, mainly they, they tell to, they told the blog post like uh, the local government can uh, bind this dashboard to their application to take effective decision like the date they told directly. So just think that uh, how effective the data source will be. So in this da dashboard, you could see all the information, the primary point uh, uh, to, to, to know the count, the country wise count. Uh, I can able to play with the grid. I can able to simply uh, get the numbers and also visuals it itself within the dashboard itself, all these things, right? And I'm able to change the date and uh, get the numbers based on that date alone. It is not that uh, uh, just the latest value alone. So it is from uh, March, sorry, May 11th till July 2nd. So and so scenario was there, right? I'm able to get that. Similarly, let, let me come back to have the whole picture itself. And you could see that as usual, the, the rise of confirmed cases has begun in uh, mid of April and so. And it has started to decline and again it has took uh, a second uh, phase. Maybe there could be many reasons. Uh, one, one reason is the a lot of uh, protests has happened as you all know in the news channel. Maybe that could be a reason. So the, uh, the government officials will be able to understand. Okay, if the confirmed cases are uh, getting steeped, probably in another uh, uh, 20 days, the daily deaths will be, um, they, they will be having a new set of uh, hype numbers. So we should be ready. We should be ready to answer the press. We should be ready to uh, uh, to tell the respective department to be ready and all those things, right? And even within this itself, uh, there are two uh, two ta tab widgets. That is, the confirmed cases as a cumulative count. That is, uh, yesterday ten, today twelve, uh, tomorrow uh, twenty, like that. That's what news channels are also telling, right? And daily increments. Even this this also our uh, Tamil Nadu news channel is telling. Uh, probably in Chennai uh, last week, same Monday, it is uh, for 20,000. Now it is 25,000. Uh, everyday cases are increasing. Um, we are, the, the Chennai has reached a new uh, new uh, set, new highest count. Like the tunnel, we are getting some insights. Right? So they'll be having a dashboard like this ready and uh, uh, calculating and calculating the measures all the time. And here again, the maps can be changed with confirmed cases and the total deaths. So by confirmed cases also we can see and by deaths also we're able to see and mainly just see the space they have allocated for uh, uh, the disclaimer or the uh, telling the source of information. It is very, very, very essential, important, right? One, uh, if if Power BI is telling uh, to you to rec recommending to the government to take the decisions out of the dashboard, each and every government person will be checking. OK, is this data is correct? Is this data valid? Uh, is there any wrong things in data like that? So they have clearly explained taking a, a, a big portion itself. Even they would have expanded this map to a bigger size and uh, uh, had a better dashboard. But they took this much of size to to tell the data integrity, to tell the correctness of data. OK. Fine. And let me come back to the slide. One more important thing is it is not just a visual that should be a right one. That is also many very important thing. It is uh, simply like uh, if you create a visual that will please not like that. It is again like a two side uh, knife. You have to be very careful in that. As you could see in one of the news channel, they have uh, such a kind of representation. 39% and 60%. 
but 39% is bigger and 60% is lesser, right? It's a very small mistake, but it might create a great impact. But actually, if we are populating it in a uh, in a level with the same value, this is how the the the, the proportion should be. But uh, uh, in my context, both the proportion is wrong and uh, the value is wrong. I don't know how it was uh, it went through, but things happen. Mistakes are common. But uh, this is just an example to do the right visual at right uh, uh, right manner. It should not. Uh, uh, deviate the actual meaning. Okay. So let me ask you a quick question. Which one of the following is a measure? Sales revenue, sales region, sales date. Yeah, you can uh, switch on your mic and uh, you can talk. Sales date. Um, uh, actually, it is uh, revenue. Because uh, I told that uh, measure is something, but uh, we, we should be able to uh, summarize, right? Aggregate. Yeah. So if it is date, we cannot uh, summarize or aggregate. If uh, the, the only thing is, uh, it is sales revenue. Only sales revenue can be summarized or uh, do uh, perform an average and all those things, right? Okay. Let me go to next question. So which one of the following is a dimension? Age. age. That's great. Super. Because e even though age is a number, uh, adding one person age to another person age is, uh, doesn't create a, a thing, right? So by age, if we display a salary means, so age should be dimension and uh, salary should be measure, right? Right. So why creating dashboard? Uh, the, the thing is, we can show it however, uh, uh, like what to say, uh, whatever uh, the way we think, right? But there are some best practices like in uh, our uh, development uh, scenarios, uh, using using usage of uh, if condition or uh, switch uh, switch branch. If 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 the if our code logic should be uh, doing a conditional statement, then we can use if or switch. Both will do the same job. But as a as a prominent developer, we'll be thinking that for uh, this scenario, either switch will be suitable or uh, uh, switch will switch case will be suitable or if else will be suitable, right? We will be thinking and uh, uh, doing the effective uh, 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 code, writing the effective. Similarly, while preparing a dashboard, also there is a set of uh, guidelines we can which we can follow. Again, this guideline varies from one one expert to another, so uh, each one have different different opinion. But th uh, there is a basic uh, uh, rule set like. Uh, you have to understand the context first, the problem context, first one. Understanding the problem context, you should, uh, just a minute, yeah. Understanding the problem cost context, you have to think over that whether it is a comparison or relationship or composition or distribution, okay? So, for example, let's take an example uh, uh, that uh, we, we need to create a visual that tells the number of active cases between different cities, okay? So here, it's obviously going to be a comparison because, because I'm going to compare the active cases between Chennai, Coimbatore, Madurai, Eero, right? So in that case, it is going to be among items, not time. Items, because it is going to be Chennai, Coimbatore, cities, not time. I didn't mention the time itself between yesterday, today, like that. My question is, uh, compare the active cases between different cities of Tamil Nadu. Then it is a comparison then it is among cities, then it is uh, two variables per item or one variable. It is one variable because it is only uh, the active cases. It is one variable. Then in, uh, it is going to be many category or few category. It is going to be few category. Then I am going to populate it in a uh, horizontal bar chart. So the topmost count, the most uh, city, the so most active cases containing city, I'll be having at the top, Chennai first. Next, uh, it will be, I think it is uh, Madurai, or, uh, I don't know. So like that, it will be uh, populating. Five. So having such a, a guideline will help at times. And one more question uh, which usually I get is, uh, 
Power BI, Tableau, Sizens, ClickView. There are many tools are there. So which one is best? Which one is easy to use? Which one is recommended? Uh, which one is uh, cost effective? Like that, many questions there. So let us ignore uh, the cost factors and all. Uh, that is uh, that that could be a separate discussion. But let us uh, take it in a developer point of view. Uh, those who are creating dashboard. Uh, I just understood this with, from a from a person called Kate. Who speaks about uh, data in LinkedIn uh, posts? So what she told us, uh, she is a BI uh, designer. Okay, so she is a dashboard designer. So what she told us, uh, if I uh, just think that if uh, Kate is entering into kitchen of herself, okay, so if, while entering into kitchen, she is, she is able to understand that uh, the stove is there, uh, the water is there, and the knives, the spices, the the main ingredients like rice or wheat, all those things, wherever they're there, and where to wash the utensils and all those things. Even she visits some other home's kitchen, either brother's uh, kitchen or some relative's kitchen. She is able to kickstart the the cooking work um, as a gradually because it is going to be the same stove, the washing utensils uh, area, the spices, the main ingredient, everything. But the thing is, the things will be relocated. Um, some things might be in her kitchen that might not be present in their kitchen, but it will be present in some other form, right? The spices will be different. The same thing, the different different BA tools are there, but the basic thumbnails is going to be same. So you might not be worry uh, too much that, uh, okay, I know Tableau, but doesn't know Power BA, what, what happens? I know Power BA, but doesn't know size and what happens? So there is nothing uh, to worry at all. You can be confident in one particular tool, and when the time, when the time comes, or when the necessity comes, because uh, each company uses different different tools. So when uh, the necessity comes, you can uh, automatically change the tool, and uh, you can learn uh, how things are being presented in that tool. Okay, the demo which I gave today with Power BI, it is not going to be same in uh, Tableau, of course, right? But in a matter of time, even if I'm given with a uh, Tableau for the first time, also I'll be able to sort out. But it, it might take some time, that's all. It's short span of time. So just concentrate in the basics and everything will, the on top of all those things will cover up automatically. Uh, to mean here, cooking is the skill, kitchen is the tool, right? Things only varies between different, different kitchens. That's all, that's, the, that's in the nutshell. So uh, if you want to get started with Power BI to create dashboards, then uh, just Hotmail account is not enough. Okay, to be a dashboard creator, you you need the Microsoft 365 subscription, uh, but uh, that subscription also is available for 60 day free trial. Uh, this link holds the information how to uh, get the 365 subscription for a trial, and that is been also present for five users. Okay, and who can start to use again? Power BI is a very, very user friendly tool and uh, designed with the with the design framework of Windows. So anyone if uh, who is a student or even he is a non IT guy or so doing some business, he, being a decision maker, they can simply start with Power BI. There is, I, I'm sure that Power BI is very easier tool than uh, uh, the most familiar Tableau or ClickView or so to get started at least. So let me uh, just uh, give you some more information about uh, different forms of visualization that emerge uh, once this uh, storytelling uh, scenario has started, right? There are tools are getting uh, new, new tools are coming, right? So now I'm going to tell different, different tools that helps for storytelling as well. So first one is uh, Microsoft Visio Visual. It is a very famous tool. Uh, it is a very powerful tool. I, uh, I can say it like that but uh, not being used by uh, many Windows users or maybe in my point, my thought process. You can see here it is again, it is the same dashboard, Power BI dashboard, but in between you could see a home layout plan. In, in the dashboard, you can see a home layout plan and all these customization like the color, font, uh, the image and all these things can be set in Power BI itself, right? Um, so using Microsoft Visual Visual, you can create yeah, template, a kind of template like this in Microsoft, in Microsoft Visual Visual, then you can import the template into your dashboard and apply all the customization, right? 
and um, there are many tools like uh, infographics. Uh, so with that, you'll be able to uh, just provide the the text. It will automatically populate you with different different visuals like that. Uh, this fishbone uh, structure develop, modify, authorize, present. Let it uh, just imagine if you present your CEO or uh, your client with such a kind of visual. Uh, it is not that you are pleasing your client. You are making your client or CEO to understand the insights better. OK, that there is a different. You are not pleasing, but you are making your, your target audience to understand the insights better. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you are presenting your product roadmap to your stakeholder, uh, if you are uh, presenting in a simple table rather than uh, uh, sorry, if you are presenting in, a, in a such a kind of visual rather than a table, think about the difference how it would be right. So. Yeah, uh, you can check out this. This is a third party tool. Just I thought to give it as a um, take away um, so which I came across and uh, even in PowerPoint itself that tool has a plugin and uh, you can create more visuals the PowerPoint the, by default PowerPoint has some set of visuals as I told as I mentioned the bar chart and all those things if uh, infography is being uh, the plugin is installed in PowerPoint then uh, it will be more effective visualization as you could see the left side uh, uh, options there are many things are there right it will be more pleasing that's it and one more thing is there are many tools have started to evolve to create uh, animated visuals as well. Uh, this also we could see in uh, news channels nowadays, many news channels, right? So how it has been the outbreak uh, from day one, day two, day three, how it has been. So in this visual, it is telling the difference of uh, outbreak uh, converting uh, from just an outbreak to uh, epidemic and then to pandemic, how it has happened. Uh, from day one to day three between different uh, diseases, coronavirus, SARS, Ebola and also, right? And uh, in Power BI also via custom visuals, uh, you will be able to create uh, so and so animated widgets. So, uh, so from the day one to day two, day three, how the number of cases increase between different countries. You can add one more uh, dimension. So fine. And uh, let me ask one more quick question. So what is the new feature in Excel that uh, does automatic data visualization? Sorry. Ideas. Yes, ideas. That's great. OK. And uh, uh, a chart that explains daily new cases by uh, by each day that comes under comparison composition relationship. Which one? It will be relationship. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. So this is just a quick recap. Um, what to say? Just a minute. Almost we are nearing the session. So the thing is, if you incorporate the seed to be a storyteller, then you can fit this uh, this skill everywhere in your work. It is not that only BI engineer or a data engineer, right? Everyone can adopt uh, adopt to this mindset and the th thought process also will be changing automatically. And as a final slide, uh, let me play this video. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Mm. Dry space bar. No. I didn't expect this thing. Okay, let me end the slideshow itself. Will it bring it here? Because it is uh, just a video, I think you'll be able to. Are you able to hear the voice or from video? No, we are not. No, no, actually a few seconds back. No. Are you able to hear? No, we are able to hear you, not video wise. Okay. 
you have to yeah. stop screen share start screen share and say input system audio okay okay able to hear no not yet okay <laughs> okay let me see for a couple of seconds if not uh, how to change the audio option uh, you you check the box is it input system audio yeah uh, actually it doesn't uh, ask for uh, yeah. choose the audio uh, if you share your screen there will be a check box before you select this box Input system audio. Okay, uh, that's what I didn't got. In the that uh, share pop up, I think he's saying. Yeah, at the bottom. Let me send you a screenshot of that on the on the chat channel. Oh, fine, fine. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Mama, I got this new challenge for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Now is it here? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. Ready? I need you to do this. Mhm. Mm do this. Now put it on your chin. Okay, good. Now do it again, but put it on your chin. Yeah, but put it on your chin. Do this, but put it on your chin. I put it on my chin. Okay, put it on your chin. No, do this what I'm doing and put it on your chin. Oh my god. I said do this. Listen to my words. Do this and put it on your chin. This is the last time I'm going to do this and put it on my chin. Mama, do this. Oh my god. Okay. 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 Okay, stop. Stop. Mama, I said do this. Do this and put it on your chin. Mama, is this your chin? I said your chin. This is your chin. Oh. Oops. <laughs> So guys, uh, have you saw, see the power of visualization, visual representation, right? So I just thought to present this, uh, that particular slide because how powerful the visualization is. And uh, the mind basically understands and gives priority about what it sees first than what it hears first. That's why as an example, I just uh, told. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm open to the question, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, in terms of creating these charts, uh, how good are the options to embed them into our own applications? Is there uh, just trying to think about how to do that for some of our clients? Uh, how do you embed them into our applications? Yeah, actually, uh, that is where uh, I told th there are different different uh, BI tools are there, right? Um, Power BI, Sizens and Dashboard and the many tools. So uh, each tool supports different different uh, levels of embedding into application. Uh, the easiest and simplest most uh, most most of the tools who provide us via iframe. There is a tag called iframe in uh, HTML. So within that iframe, whatever URL you are giving, uh, that will be displayed. So uh, within an iframe, if a dashboard link is uh, being uh, uh, present, I mean, if a dashboard link is included, then that can be embedded into an application directly. That is one direct option. But when it comes to a real application, the security matters. So it is not as uh, most of the applications will not allow uh, uh, embedding iframe. Uh, that's uh, uh, at least secure application. So uh, there are other options being provided by different different tools like they provide embedding options via JavaScript and uh, 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 there, there are many options. Mostly, since uh, the most of the applications nowadays are created as a web application, JavaScript embedding is the most uh, prominent thing uh, for which uh, de developers uh, support is needed. It, uh, that part cannot be done uh, simply by a button click like that. That that is that requires a bit of coding. Okay, so uh, then that means the the client must have a power, a power BI login in that case. If they have exactly. a Power BI login, then they'll be able to visualize as well. Uh, actually, things happens like uh, 
what to say i can take this question like this yeah yeah yes yeah. 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 so i have i have done this in previous project uh, what we have done is uh, if you have a iframe as uh, dinesh said all you need is an url that you can send it from the power bi on that case you don't need a uh, any license the one license which you used to create power bi is enough <laughs> the other other uh, the url will be the one which is part of the iframes url uh, we have to put it in the iframe tab so that you can uh, so that in the any web page so that's exactly what i did in previous project the only uh, only thing is um uh, with the, the if you if you, you can use the same url in different let's say okay this is example he is showing so the so src is there right so that yeah. will be the power bi url you can generate out of power, 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 the dashboard you created on using one of the power bi uh, license and then you can put that on any web page that won't be a problem at all the, the, for that you don't need a license license but if you want to change it if you want to filter it so those uh, it's not in the uh, normal filters is fine but if you want to change the data source or data source filter then you need a power bi license otherwise for visualization purpose it's clean uh, because i have tried it and it worked it's like perfectly it's working also now oh, okay that that's very useful yeah yeah, yeah okay. thank you yeah good so oh, and uh, jagdish thanks i mean uh, for uh, to give a clarification actually jagdish told me about this uh, teams meeting to have everybody as a guest so people can interact thanks like this for that uh, information otherwise sure. this would have not been useful yeah i'm happy it's useful yeah thank you yeah so i just showed a dashboard right i just told that uh, power bi has exposed a public dashboard and uh, they told that uh, enables local governments to publish in their application so they just published it as a blog itself and they as a step by step procedure you, you can find it here so from downloading from downloading power bi and uh, how the pre built embed code should be there as uh, kartikeyan and myself told the iframe tag uh, since this is a public dashboard iframe is uh, more than enough there is no problem at all so and how it should be embedded all the all, uh, everything on uh, the step by step procedure will be here okay that's very helpful Okay. Um, is there any other question? Yeah, I have a question. So, uh, to start off, uh, it's a very good presentation, and the last bit of video was even more eye-opening. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. So, my question is uh, in terms of integration. So, uh, you you were mentioning about uh, 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 Excel. Uh, so, what are the other ways we can in? Uh, integrate uh, source data so me being a uh, technical background uh, me working on aws azure is, is there a way we can uh, integrate data from these apis into power bi yes it is possible uh, we know um, so uh, i i hope you are able to see my screen uh, just a minute yeah here it is yes, Pop, it. Awesome. so as you could see the option uh, get data by default it will be uh, displaying the prominent uh, data sources so it is uh, present here so i i if you just click more here okay this minute actually the pop up goes somewhere i think i think it's down somewhere no yeah <laughs> ah okay let me see okay i can see now Ah yeah, yeah, got it. Fine. The middle of so, the screen. <laughs> okay. So here uh, you could see the different options like file, database, Power Platform, Azure, online services. So since uh, Power BI is a Microsoft tool, uh, they prominently support all all kind of storage, as SQL, Cosmos DB, Blob Storage, HD Inside, and all those things. And uh, coming to AWS services, you could find cover some of the services here. Um, where is it? AWS uh, bucket. Th there are few services. Type AWS in the search. Type AWS. In search. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Amazon. Try Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amazon Redshift. As you could okay. see. Yeah. The, okay. The, okay. I can take. Oh, I, I can. I have one more thing to add to what was being said. Uh, the point mm -hmm. is, if you can connect it. through a connection string or any other 
HTTP or any other protocol, right? You can actually connect it here also. It doesn't mean that you have to have a proper, uh, how to say, the icon or the source to be uh, displayed. Well, what if you want to connect a MySQL and it is in Amazon? You can still connect it. So that is that is how it works. If you can connect your uh, application through an uh, to that data source, you all you can also connect it through this uh, Power BI. Most probably, uh, most almost like ninety percent of the things you can connect. Yeah. So as you say, right. ODBC is there. Yeah. Right, certified connectors at the bottom, blue hyperlink. Yeah, it is. Uh, Microsoft will be uh, what to say? They'll they'll test from there and as well, and uh, they'll uh, list out some of those connections. Uh, like uh, what to say? There are so many connectors are there, right? Spark, and uh, you, you coming to online services, many tools are there. Um, Smartsheet, Spark Post, Sweet IQ. These are all like uh, small, small apps which comes up. There, there might be that uh, this uh, app itself would be bought by some other person and uh, the name might change. But that thing Power BI might not be able to track off for all the apps. So what they'll do is uh, with the certificate connectors, it is something that uh, they'll be keeping track everything and it will be perfectly fine. If it is not certified or if it is marked with the beta or something, uh, just we have to be uh, for sure also. Uh, just in case if any API changes like that, right? And uh, coming to the Karthikeyan's point, it is nothing but a web connector. If you just select this web connector, then it will be asking the generic uh, uh, inputs like uh, the URL and uh, what to say, the, the command timeout options and the header, uh, request header parameters, or if there is any other parameter, like uh, simply say whatever you're able to do in a Postman app, you can able to do in a Power BI as well. If you are able to uh, get some data in Postman, then uh, the same scenario applies here as well in Power BI as well. You, but the thing is, you have to enter everything manually. That's the difference. And uh, one final question from myself is that uh, uh, I know if you are doing the storytelling, you will be uh, attacked with lots of questions. So, uh, what is your? If you could give a small thought on uh, this drill down, uh, because most of the uh, presentations will be drilled down on certain areas. A small thought on it will be nice. Okay, coming to the part of drill down. If it is a storytelling, then uh, uh, mostly the drill down should not be required in that that question itself. Okay, uh, if it is going to be a yeah, single shot. It, it should be something like a single shot. The confirmed cases and uh, death cases in Tamil Nadu. Then that the visual should be having that, and the decision maker will be keen to focus on Tamil Nadu, particularly if it is a storytelling dashboard. If and so necessary only, the drill down uh, works out there. That uh, that is to drill down to the next level. Okay. So most probably a storytelling dashboard will not have drill down. Most probably. Okay, that is true. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So, is there any other questions? We'll wait for thirty more seconds and then we'll call it. Okay. Uh, one, uh, uh, some of our developers were trying to load uh, data from the database, and um, you know they had several fields. They said the joins were taking what a long time to join. Uh, it took almost about 40 for minutes. So what yeah. they've done is they've written stored procedures on the database side, so it will sort of like prefetch data before it comes into Power BI. Would that be a, a method that you see working well long term? Or would you recommend to directly access the data from Power BI and let it figure out uh, how the how the join should happen? So, uh, what I'll tell is, uh, it depends on uh, uh, different companies. I can say, but uh, because either it is uh, the the joins being uh, done in Power BI or the joins being done in the, uh, at the database server level itself, it's going to be how it is maintained properly. For example. If a company is having a strong BI team, okay, let's take a, there is a BI team 
and there is a dedicated bi engineer then uh, uh, this will be the relevant scenario the the joins and all those things will be present in power bi okay um, again considering the metrics if the uh, if the join is going to take uh, equal time in both sql server and power bi let us consider like that then if there is a dedicated bi engineer and enough resource for bi then the joins will be the present in power bi application if there is no dedicated engineer uh, just the back end team is there just for the requirement alone they come and create dashboard means the back end team the C those who are familiar with sql uh, environment they will be having all those joins in their environment only only then the maintenance will be easier this this point is or uh, considering that the perform metrics is same metrics right. is same right uh, coming to your uh, statement if metrics is different obviously whichever is best producing whichever is higher performance that will be the option okay. if it is uh, better, better for performing at the uh, sql server level then the, that will be the option so i can add one more thing because we had the same problem before uh, the best way to do it is uh, so when you say join right basically you're trying to build another table correct so right. the best way to do is actually do an etl meaning extract transform load at a point of uh, maybe at every night or every 3 hours every 4 hours where you copy that to any some flat table where it is actually directly resp- i mean uh, correlates to your ui so if right. okay so if you put a join say five different tables and then Uh, there is one say selecting 10 columns i would suggest you to um, do the join run a job at night or something like that that runs and then push that into a single table that way that will not take much time saying yeah saying that 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 is a little bit relative what uh, what we were actually working out for on both the bases uh, sometimes what happens is it takes 45 minutes but we are okay with that because we'll do it in the morning some guy can as as uh, dinesh was saying if there is a power bi developer who is okay with doing that 45 minutes let him do it in the morning and he call, goes for a coffee and then comes down or let it run and then it once it once the um what is that ua is pulled it will be the same before ua is getting pulled it will take some time and that that depends on us that depends on the uh, real time feed you want to have uh, so right. that way in a situation that, exactly so criticality of the data it means the data can be Delayed by six hours or twelve hours, twenty-four hours. We can always say your data will be populated the next day. Yeah, and then do so, a batch sync. And if you want something yeah. within five minutes granularity, you can do an immediate table or probably set up an Azure search index sort of. A yes, method. exactly. So that 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 is a, that has a Z index ordering, which is like amazing. I mean, I was actually I started learning about that. That that is uh, that's so good. It is. They talk about uh, even uh, say uh, let's take a weather table. Weather table where uh, if I want to know like. Uh, at w- what time uh, there was only 19 to 20 degree of centigrade in excluding january so like that the, like a customized question even if there's a customized question uh, the uh, it rate will be like uh, if you say you cannot add index to those questions right what we normally do is if you want a search to be proper we add index to the columns but if the question is like uh, really a little bit uh, fuzzy question it's pretty tough to uh, add index to each and every column and composite indexes so that is where the z order index comes in that they use that to uh, build those question and the uh, number of rows it actually uh, scans is lesser and then the result is also faster that way you don't pay for compute also so when whenever you actually write a query that actually scans more rows you will be paying for more compute so this this okay. reorder index is paying uh, paying for lesser compute and getting better uh, uh, output meaning Say so instead of scanning one lakh records, you will be scanning twenty to thirty thirty records, and then giving you an output. So as you said, Azure Search is also a pretty good uh, uh, thing to actually think about on those terms. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Suresh yeah. Kumar, sir. Karthik Suresh has asked a question. Let me answer. Yeah. So Suresh has asked, as a developer, if you want to learn Power BI, then where to start with? Um, I will recommend like uh, um, you might be familiar in a domain, right? Uh, may I know which domain are you familiar, Suresh? Can you able to speak or uh, is it fine? Mm, I think he's yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me, Dinesh? Yes, yes, I can be able to hear. Okay. So I am belongs to uh, .dot net. Yeah, .dot net. Okay. Domain, uh, which retail domain? or consumer? 
no it's actually uh, retail okay okay so if it is retail means then uh, obviously you will be uh, mostly uh, uh, having some uh, sales information like in your application uh, your mind would be registered with such kind of data right sales billing uh, invoices something like that right so just yeah. take just take a sample data which you mostly mostly you, you have used okay mostly adavadhu unga application la nariya use pannirukra romba vaati repeated ah use pannirukra data va you just take that so just sample data 100 rows or something is enough adoda schema pakka va undu you should be in your mind why i tell is uh, you are going to learn power bi to create visuals so uh, the data portion should be pretty much uh, in your mind so once the data is very clear you have to create a set of question uh, so if it is a sales data in, the, in third quarter uh, uh, august month 30th day what is the product uh, sales of uh, uh, sales on that day if if you just frame that uh, context and you think which visual should be used so have a relevant data have power bi connect with that and uh, just for first of all populate it in a table okay first of all populate okay. it in a table okay. then uh, slowly start using other widgets so this is a table right so if you use it in a table yeah. it is simply like a, a representation like a grid format uh, and then slowly start to use uh, number card first one table and then number card and then go to other charts step by step so it will be where uh, if you just set up with a path like this um you can automatically uh, have a ground up okay so uh, when it's uh, when we say the power bi i think uh, it's a licensed one right so do we have any uh, trial version or any uh, uh, freeware for exploring this uh, power bi yeah that's what uh, uh, let me even ping that link here as well um i just explained this portion earlier so uh uh-huh. Uh, how to uh, create a self start uh, power bi uh, how to have a kick, uh, getting started so if you are having a simple uh, hotmail account then it is uh, not possible to uh, design dashboards over power bi you need a office 365 subscription okay so for that you can follow the this link and uh, uh, you will be having a 60 day trial yeah 60 day trial so with that you will be able to install the power bi in your machine and uh, you can go ahead so install the power bi will be um, you can find it in the microsoft store i hope you are uh, from uh, windows background only so if you just go to the microsoft yeah. store and uh, just search for power bi uh, it will uh, get installed uh, you don't need to go yeah. somewhere and uh, uh, download the setup and all those things once you do this it will be automatically um, set up in your machine okay okay right thank you yeah Okay. I mean, it was acting very interactive at the end. Not so much, but hopefully in the middle also. Yeah. Good, good, good. I'm just liking it because when people ask questions, they learn a lot, and others also learn from it. Any other yes. questions? Yeah.